Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast, Dragon Ball Edition. Today, we're going to be going over Dragon Ball Super Chapter number 73, titled Goku vs. Granola. And we have our Dragon Ball expert with us, Mitch Oso. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well, sir. How are you this afternoon? I am doing well. I am doing well. Thank you. And as I said, we're going to be going over Chapter 73, which was a lot, a lot of action, and we're going to give our quick summary of what happened in the chapter and then go from there, and I will actually be giving the summary a little bit this time. We're going to switch it up, and then we will go from there. So if you read the last chapter, you saw it ended with Goku going Super Saiyan Blue about to fight Granola. Starts right off with that. It's actually a couple of pages of those two going right at it, in between the wood, punch for punch, blast for blast, kick for kick, and it's, it's very action-packed. You don't even get any dialogue on it until page 12, where then you see Goku at Super Saiyan Blue mixing Ultra into Super Saiyan Blue, so we have that confirmed as well. Uh, Granola is really not that too afraid of it because he's already figured out Ultra Instinct, which is wild that we're having a new quote-unquote villain just say that out of the blue goku said blue plus ultra instinct won't be that easy to counter so then goku is getting the best of them there and then he pulls up right into granola's face for his old school dragon ball fans who remember when he warped kamehameha cell kind of gave us a reminiscing of that because he pulled up and did a super kamehameha right in granola's face and then you have Vegeta consistency in the explosion and one of the heaters, the big one who was watching. Fish, do you remember that guy's name? Uh, his name is Oil. Oil. So Oil was there watching. And Granola got busted. And Goku's down as well. And Goku's back to normal. And Granola's talking about stronger attacks. Those won't help you. His right will be everything. Um, he said no matter what transformation you use, uh, they'll have... They'll always have a weakness, so there'll never be no opening. And Goku actually said something that, Mitch, you've talked about for the past couple of weeks now. Ultra Instinct should have no weaknesses. We were told this was going to be the be-all, end-all. So if it's anything, Goku said he's lacking the training with it. So, Mitch, I did want to give you a shout-out to that because you've been saying that for every month that Ultra Instinct should have no weaknesses. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that they actually put that in the chapter just because they acknowledge it. So maybe they're not trying to like deviate off of Ultra Instinct and what it's been hyped up since the beginning. So that was that was a pleasant surprise just to see that Goku blamed it on itself for it not being, you know, perfected and uh, went on and so forth. But yeah, pretty good. I'll let you continue. And then right from that, Goku said he's not used to using Ultra Instinct as super standard. Granola said there's going to be no excuses. You people are dying here. You'll never get that. And then Granola did something very interesting. He put his hands in the air, and then you saw something come out of the ground, which engulfed Goku. And Goku had to use instant transmission to get out. And he instant transmission himself. And Goku said that move looks like Moro, where I think, Mitch, this is where we're just that dragon just gave him the strongest people's moves at the time of his wish. Because now if he's doing a move similar to Moro's, he had a move similar to Goku's. He had a move similar to, well, I guess, Vegeta's now. Moro's just doing moves. He has no idea. Um, Vegeta's not strong much. And uh, Vegeta is then telling Goku that he may know who Granola is from the place that they're at. And then he explains how these stands were ordered by Frieza to take them out. And uh, they called him a tribe full of snipers, which I don't really know if I like that term, but it was all right. And then Vegeta talks about how Mackie and Oil played them for full, so I guess the jig is up. Um, and then Oil is just like, it's like there's no turning back now as he's on the phone. Goku then asks Vegeta, is like, should we try and convince him we're not bad guys? And Vegeta's like, I doubt it. He wants to kill us all, so it's probably him. 
and Goku said, I gotta beat him first. And Vegeta does ask if he's still playing the fight. Then Goku says, I haven't whipped out Ultra Instinct at full power. And Vegeta, and then Vegeta says, I don't work that in the end, huh? The next page, I do like this picture, Mitch, after Goku says that, and you see walking out of the smoke is mastered Ultra Instinct Goku. I did like that uh, picture. Granola's like, I can't perceive anything. And Goku's like, this is maintain it for a while so yeah that picture was he walked in past it. and then honestly from there on the next couple of pages as mastered ui goku granola is getting his ass whooped just flat out he can't touch goku he is getting pounded so i know in first reading this we thought we're like all right still mastered ultra instinct goku not taking any l's that's what we thought. And then just kept going page for page. Goku at Mastered UI was just stomping him. So we were like, okay, our suspicions are true. Um, Granola's wish did not make him stronger than Mastered UI. Goku, because that would be way too OP. Uh, Vegeta does say this was fourth wall breaking. Seems as though Capra stole the entire show again. No, we all say that. Not and a uh, granola just passed into a ball and it feels like as he stood out, what's going on? And then Vegeta notices that granola power is coming from somewhere else. And then Goku's trying to talk to him, you know, the typical Goku stuff asking how he's trained, um, that they're not bad guys, we can walk away, we can spar some time. And granola drops the bombshell that. He has been underestimating Goku, and he drops the line that I shouldn't have put my power at the start. And the granola that we saw, like Goku's been fighting this whole time, is him, but not him. So he made a clone, which we have not seen this in Dragon Ball. He made a clone to this extent. He made a clone, an illusion of himself, with about maybe half of his power. And the other one was hiding because he wanted to save his energy for Frieza. Because remember, Granola's mind. Frieza's still the strongest. Uh, Vegeta tells Goku that his real body's over there. And by the time Goku notices, he gets hit again in his vital spot. And he's out of Master UI. He's back to normal. His eyes go white. And he goes flying through a rock. And it almost looks like he's down. He's dead again. And then Granola talks about he decided to clone or freeze the said, but he uh, took some time. And he said he knew he could find a weak spot in Goku eventually because that UI form actually dropped over time in the silver hair form. Granola's about to go finish off Goku, then Vegeta stops in. He had talked about how he suppressed the count of his vitals again. Vegeta tells Granola that Goku's not going to be up for a while. I'm your opponent now. And Vegeta starts talking some trash, saying, Why? Why don't you join the rest of the tribe? You would plan on killing every last fan, and I'll even talk to you. Don't your tribe. Try that up to extinct. And next chapter will hit July 20th with Vegeta versus Granola. So, mid. I guess beginning wise, how did you feel about the first part with Super Saiyan Blue mixed with Ultra Instinct going against Granola? The presentation of this chapter with um, with that beginning part pretty pretty solid, you know. I mean, we we went right into action. Um, we see Goku and Granola just going at it, and they're they're like what you said at the beginning. You know, they're flying through the forest, and they're they're um, outmaneuvering each other and just uh, pulling out um pulling out all the stops and um uh the artwork by uh, Toritaro it's fantastic in this scene very detailed very sophisticated drawings and whatnot um one of the scenes or one of the panels that um was pretty sweet was whenever they were you know going through the forest and all of a sudden so granola flying through the forest and goku's um chasing right behind him and he's he's trying to blast granola and um granola um uses his uh one of his like um 
I don't want to call it a rope, but one of his headbands or whatnot, wraps around a tree and whipped himself back around to kick Goku right in the face. Pretty sweet. Um, something that we haven't really seen uh, too much about. But what that does is um, when Goku catches himself, Granola charges right at him. And what I think is a good panel is on um, page eight here. Um, it shows Goku. He's dodging Granola's punch. And it's kind of a weird dodge method, but Goku uses his forearm to block the punch. Obviously, you would never use that in real life. But the punch is so strong that Goku actually makes a remark that it hurt. Um, so, I mean, Goku, Super Saiyan Blue, feels the, the, the weight of Granola's punches. So, Granola is not a joke. And they keep fighting, fighting, fighting. And then, uh, uh, well, that's, uh, that's what happens. And then what you said that, you know, Goku does a, a, a warp Kamehameha, essentially, and um, goes right at Granola and just, you know, blasts the hell out of him. In a sweet scene, uh, reminiscent of uh, what happened to Cell. Um, just the difference is, is that Granola wasn't blasted um, to, you know, smithereens. He essentially just got up and just kept going at it. So, yeah, that first part, pretty sweet. I'd give that, by, you know, an A+, plus, 10 out of 10, just for that section. So. And then you go to the second part that we talked about, and Goku and Vegeta are talking. Well, first off, how do you feel about Granola just whipping out Moro's move now? So, like what you had said, you know, the dragon just gave Gr- Granola all of these all of these different moves across the universe. So we can, so now we can, we can tell that he can, he can do anything. He can do anything, you know, and even the, the characters that maybe we don't know of who have special abilities, Granola now knows it. So, you know, if the Yardrads know something else that Goku and Vegeta were never taught, he knows it. Um, I want to know what is the limitations, though, because this must be the wish must only grant him um, abilities of the mortals. So divine beings can't he he can't learn the techniques uh, from like a divine being like a Beerus. But since like Vegeta, for example, learned um, how to Hakai being a mortal. Uh, Granola could learn that technique, which then I would imagine um, Ultra Instinct, you know, is the the power of the gods, which I don't I don't know where that falls in. Like, if Granola can Hakai, why can't why didn't he learn Ultra Instinct? But I guess on the flip side, Goku doesn't have it mastered, and there's no mortal that has it mastered in Universe Seven that we know of. So I guess that must be the explanation. But Vegeta's barely like mastered how to hug Kai, but Granola has demonstrated that ability right whenever he made the wish. So um, the only thing that really, I, I mean, I think it's sweet that Granola knows how to do Moro's attacks. That must mean, though, that he can learn dead people's abilities. So basically, mm-hmm. any anyone who ever was alive or is alive or maybe help people in the future, I don't know. Um, or that means that instead of Granola being dead or um, Moro being dead, maybe Moro is still alive. Or maybe you learned it from 7-3, because 7-3 is technically still alive. So... Um, I'm I'm ready to hear the explanation as to how he knows Moro's ability. What what can that dragon really really do? But uh, yeah, that's pretty pretty clever, pretty uh, out of the blue uh, technique. Definitely was caught off guard by that. So what do you feel about the next part? I mean, after the Goku uh, Vegeta talking to each other about where Granola is from, and Vegeta realizing they've been played as fools, we have Mastered Ultra Instinct come out. Did you? Did you think MUI was going to show up this early? No, I did. I did not. Um, but I think it was kind of needed because I mean, everyone has said that Granola is the strongest in the universe, and he has to go up against what I guess what we know as the strongest 
technique in the universe, and that's MUI. But before before that, um, the one thing I do want to mention because you had brought up, you know, the dialogue between Goku and Vegeta. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I like for Vegeta to know about the Cerulean's makes mm-hmm. sense, but I was hoping that at the end of the chapter, chapter seventy two, I meant when um when Goku said, "I know who." granola is i was hoping that he would actually know him who he was specifically like was he you know like a fallen prince kind of like himself or um was he a descendant of someone that he fought you know what i mean um that's what i was hoping for because i thought you know that would make for a good story plot vegeta prince of saiyans granola prince of cerulean's both both races were wiped off the face of the universe by Frieza. You know, there, there's like, there's similar, there's, that would have been a plot point I would have loved. But it doesn't look like that's what it was. Instead, he just, Vegeta knows that, oh, he's, he's part of a race of snipers that we were told to get rid of by Frieza. Yawn. <laughs> Yawn. Boring. All right, so to be honest with you, that's the weakest part of this chapter is just, in my eyes, is that Vegeta just, he only knows them just based off of their race as a whole. So, oh well. And then you have MUI, MUI just stomping Moro. I, I know, I, how did you feel about that? It, it, well, it, it was nice that, you know, when we watched, and I'm, and I'm, going, to, I'm, I'm going to build off of, how I accidentally mistaken what you said there. It was nice seeing, you know, MUI go against Moro, you know, with his angel powers. And Goku was, you know, he, he either held his own or he won, essentially. So that's kind of the bar that we have right now. So Granola being the strongest in the universe, it's kind of hard to put, you know, where is that <laughs> in comparison to Moro with angel powers i would imagine in theory moral with angel powers is still stronger than any mortal but let's just say you know they're they're on the same like they're on par with each other the fact that mui was still stomping him was great it was great it um it makes the transformation that much more powerful it tells you where they are in the tiers what made it even better well in terms of granola, but not in terms of Goku. Say, you know, Goku is, he's just chit-chatting. And then he tells granola his, the secret. And that is basically while in MUI, time just needs to pass because he cannot hold the form, right? And granola being this super smart, this really high intellect fighter, Granted, he didn't know that whenever he split himself into a clone, but he utilized that fact um, to wait until Goku, um, until the form became less effective. Um, so um, Goku, being the, the typical idiot that he's been in the past, just doesn't take his opponent seriously. Kind of a rehash plot point, but it turned out that Granola used it to his advantage for a different version of the plot and you know made it sweet. Yeah, so that different that different version that we talked about with like him being split in two. And I just want to like how st- who knows that technique? Yeah. Like that that's not a that's not a, a multi form, you know, that's not well I mean I guess it could be. It could be a multi form um just uh but you know group Granola doesn't even say that he split his power in half. He, he he just says that he just he just split off, you know, just put some power into this clone. Um, for any of the listeners who, you know, um, they follow any fan mangas, um, you know, there's the one that, um, you know, um, Unrelent Gaming posts about all the time. And that's with, the you know, Universe 13 Angel Mirus. And, um, I mean, Maris, he, he has sent clones all throughout the multiverse. 
Um, and they're all super powerful, if not like on par with the original. So it's kind of like, <laughs> did uh, did Toriyama and Toritaro did they actually check out that fan manga and were they given an idea? And, you know, maybe Miris is roaming around Universe Seven when the wish is made, but that goes against what I was saying earlier about Granola not learning MUI. But I digress. But uh, yeah, I want I want to know what it, what is this copy technique like? Is this it, it's interesting, but just to know that um, a and we'll just say half powered that a half powered granola can stand up to Super Saiyan Blue, uh, and yeah, um, can again survive at least against MUI. What what what, what does a full powered uh, granola entail? Because I'm sorry, Freeze is going to get killed. Freeza <laughs> is about. Freeze, Freeze stands no chance, and Granola has no idea that he is facing his toughest adversaries right now, unless Gas is like the end all, be all of all antagonists. <laughs> it's like, yeah, man, because I'm I'm with you when he said that he split his clone. I'm like, so Goku was using Super Saiyan Blue mixed with Ultra Instinct. And had to resort to MUI against a clone. I was like, "What the hell are we really dealing with here?" I, I, I don't know, man. This is bad. And then Goku gets hit once, and he goes like yards away. Oh, he, he gets sent across the planet, man. He just gets. And I just can't believe how fast Granola is. That he he is his original is sitting in his spaceship, you know. And his clone is sitting on the ground, and he that he, he, it is far away. But um, Vegeta checks it out though and sees it, and then out of nowhere, like I, even though MUI is winding down, the fact that is is that Granola came out of nowhere and and hit the vital point on Goku's heart and and effed him up, and it effed him up so quickly. That he fell out of Ultra Instinct right when the tip of his finger touched him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's insane. So, I guess going forward, because now Vegeta said it's his turn. Dude, what the hell is Vegeta about to do against a no-clone Granola? Like, I feel like he's going to get annihilated. There is nothing Vegeta can do unless... And this is, you know, no outside... Um, no outside interference. There's only two things that Vegeta has that could potentially help him at all. And that is, the obvious one is that he's going to try to use, he's trying to, go, he's going to try to hug Kai, um, Granola, which um, I guess we'll, we'll find out if Granola even knows what's about to happen and how he'll respond to it. Um, but if Granola knows how to hug Kai himself, can, you know, can they try to hug Kai each other? Will will Granola win that Hakai fight? <laughs> and then will Vegeta just be completely erased? Or will we find out that, you know, Vegeta's earring prevents him from being destroyed, like by Hakai energy? And uh, it's going to be interesting. Or um, this is, you know, the long shot prediction. This, I, I don't believe this will want to happen, but it'd be kind of funny if you want to. They, they did mention the moral arc, so maybe. I mean, it always has, always has a chance, and that is Vegeta uses his forced fission spirit technique, and we find out that all of the energy that Granola has received over time, while his is not his in that moment, <laughs> so then, you know, Vegeta weakens him because he hasn't earned that energy at that moment in time yet. I don't know. That's, that's a stretch. I understand, but I don't know what else he's going to do. I'm waiting for gas to come and fuck up granola because that's the only way these guys are surviving. And and I don't know. I, I feel like someone needs to die between Goku and Vegeta to make granola really sweet. So it looks like if that will happen, Vegeta's going to be the one that gets killed. But Vegeta's way too arrogant right now. Yes, that's what I wanted to. 
that's what I wanted to bring up, bro. Like he just saw MUI Goku just get like he got touched once and now he's down and this isn't a cloning. He's coming in talking that good shit. Like when he when he showed up against Moro, but at least against Moro, he had a secret weapon we didn't know about. There's nothing new that Vegeta's gonna pull out that Super Saiyan Blue Evolution is not gonna do it. Seriously. I mean, all he has is Akaya, as far as we're concerned. So I mean I mean Vegeta's Vegeta's gonna get he's gonna get found, man. He's he is about to be blindsided by something special. And I I don't know if he's gonna survive it. I really don't. Like there's no way Vegeta can think he's stronger than MUI Goku. There's no way. He, maybe he's gonna make Beerus par- proud and you know, maybe maybe Vegeta kills Granola and then gas comes, stomps him. And then they go hiding because they can't beat gas for whatever reason. And then they have to bring back granola somehow. That's a plot twist. The Saiyans having to revive um, a Cerulean that they wiped out off the face of, you know, the universe to fight um, the heaters. I don't know. There's There's another, you know, story plot that, you know, it's good in theory. Probably never will happen. (laughs) <laughs> Bro, it's also the fact too that Vegeta is talking this trash in base form right now. Like, bro, what what are you about to do? And you're and you said it earlier, man, because we said Frieza needs to be back by this summer. I don't know if Frieza wants to show up now. Because this, this, no, this ain't the fight for him. Frieza, Frieza should not show up. Frieza needs he needs to find you know the the new Dragon Ball movie needs to come out. They need to introduce cooler and then introduce golden cooler and then they need to fuse because that's the only way in which they're standing a chance is a is a double cooler Frieza. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> yeah, I mean, Fre- Frieza's going to kill. Like, like I just he better be training. He, he better be training all the time. Unless he's still looking for Marley. I just I'm really still on the fact that a clone version of Granola was Taken it to a Super Saiyan Blue um, Ultra Instinct inside Goku. And I guess this is the manga, so I would assume it was perfected Super Saiyan Blue Goku. And, like, Goku had to go MUI against the clone. Like, it's literally going MUI against a minion before the actual real boss of a video game shows up. Yep, it really is. You know, using your using your special attack before you even, you know, Get to the final level. It's a shame. It makes you feel bad. It makes you, it just doesn't give you any sense of uh, comfort to uh, you know think that you're going to get past them. Yeah, it it a uh, clone. God, good lord. So what what page do you think when Vegeta's? Because I'm already gonna say it. Unless I don't want it to happen. Obviously, it's gonna happen when Vegeta's getting stomped by Nola. What page do you think Gas comes in and just wrecks everyone? Like page fifteen. I would assume gas comes at the end of the chapter because at at some point. So I think this, this fight's going to start off, off probably. You know, um, if anything, it might actually show Granola toying with Vegeta. Um, you know, Vegeta not getting like hurt, but it's clearly obvious that he doesn't stand a chance against Granola. And then Vegeta then just tries to Hakai him. There, there's probably going to be some dialogue in there too, obviously, to advance the plot. Uh, maybe we'll see a panel of granola or of um, uh, gas and Alec coming down from their spaceship um, and meeting up with oil. But um, but yeah, Vegeta will try to Kai. Something will happen there, and then gas will show up at the end of the chapter. Because even for the people who are like, oh, maybe he'll mix a Kai with Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. A Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Hakai Vegeta still in my mind is not stronger than MUI Goku until proven otherwise. So he is, and MUI Goku just lost the barely full power granola as we've seen now, which is why, like, he's going to get killed, man. I'm I'm actually getting nervous for next month. Yeah, next month is going to be really exciting. Um, it, It really is. I mean, Goku... Goku MUI, I mean, that, that that's the best fighting t- technique out there, you know? It, it is, 
I mean, if you're trying to have a showdown, that's the technique you want to have. Vegeta, though, with Hakai and being weaker, he, it's just a cheat code, man. It's like, you know, playing Grand Theft Auto back in the day, and you just got sick and tired of the cops, and you just you know, punched in the code, and all the stars went disappear. Or you gave yourself invincibility, and you just made yourself OP. It's just, that's that's basically a Kai. Now, good. You know, Vegeta or uh, Goku tried to a Kai. Um, Zamasu, and you remember how that actually was working. Um, like in the like in an anime, when Beerus uh Hakai Zamasu, like Zamasu didn't have a chance to save himself in the anime. Once once Beerus did it, he was gone, he was dead. But in the manga, Goku tried to Hakai Zamasu, and as he's getting erased. You know, he reaches through a portal to grab Mai and stops the Hakai from happening. So it's not as instantaneous as what it was shown in the anime. Will would Granola um, be able to get himself out of being a Hakai? So it's uh, I wonder how the the approach would be taken. Is it like anime Hakai or is it going to be uh, the manga Hakai? So yeah, this. This is this is rough, man. Like, n- n- do we start thinking about fusion? I mean, I think fusion will always be in the fans' minds, but I don't personally. I don't want fusion all the time because I, I think it's a very easy plot line to um, to you know jump to. Um, but it's like, I, yeah, I think I think you know if go. If Goku and Vegeta fuse, Granola stands no chance, clone or not. Um, and um, I don't think gas. I, I don't think anyone stands a chance against an MUI Gogeta with Hakai. No, nope, no chance. Nowhere. Uh, Beers doesn't stand a chance. Um, borderline Weiss is the only one that stands a chance. Um, only because he's mastered Ultra Instinct, but I mean, if if Gogeta would know it better than Goku does, then we're we're talking about angels that are only hope of stopping that character. Yeah, and I, I agree with that because that would be a lot of you got MUI Hakai Force Spirit Fish Vision Gogeta. And I only just brought it up because once Vegeta gets his ass whooped next month. In like the first six pages, because he is talking way too cocky right now that he is going to get stomped. Yeah, it's going to be bad. Like, are are you tired of that kind of format, though? You know, you know, like we get the beginning, we get these, we get these new villains, and Goku, Vegeta, go fight them. They think they're going to do fine. They get they get their asses beat, and regardless of the order. You know, it could be Goku first, Vegeta first. You know, they go get their ass beat. Uh, they almost die. They somehow get away. They they train, power up. I, I, I don't I don't know if they're going to train too so much unless they're going to train MUI again and Vegeta learns like how to Kai some more. I mean, and then they're gonna go fight somebody and they're not gonna they're not gonna win again. So it's like is it are we are we in a are we in a loop? Is this deja vu? Yeah, I think we're in a loop. I think with Moro though, like they didn't know what Moro could do at the beginning, so that caught them by surprise. Because let's let's be honest, Vegeta should have beat Moro. Like he, that should have been the end. Like when he came back with four spirit Fisher, and then we had that nonsense of him eating seven three and getting stronger. But yeah, I, I understand like, the loop like. You can say that though with granola, they don't, they don't know what granola does. They don't know about these clones or how powerful he is. Or that's true. That's true. That is true. And I don't know if they'll get it. I don't. But with granola, I don't know if they'll get a second crack at it though. Like I, I don't know if they're getting rematches. It will be nice if the heaters really become the third adversary. You know, um, I don't want them like at the end of this arc. Like, you know, granola can be like a like 
you know, considered a good guy, but I don't want him to be considered an ally. Like I like I want I want a new strong character. Like Jiren, like Jiren should be doing more stuff. Um, you know, Moro's dead, Moro's evil, that's fine. But Granola, like, where's Broly? We need Broly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bro- Broly is a super powerful dude, still alive. He's not trying to kill anyone, so you know, Goku and Vegeta aren't trying to kill him. But I mean, he could be and he's a Saiyan. Like that that lines up with this. A super strong Saiyan going up against Granola that isn't Goku or Vegeta. Like it needs to happen, unless unless that's where Frieza's at. I mean, that's what I was gonna say. Last time we left the movie, he said they needed to make a new controller thing ASAP so they could control Broly. So unless he's going there still to get him, but I don't know why Frieza's going there because Frieza will get his ass whooped by him. Yeah, yeah. Unless, like you said, Frieza's been training because Frieza trained for four months and went from the dude who got sliced up by Super Saiyan 1 Trunk to four months of training being on par with Super Saiyan Blue Goku. So if he's been training this whole time, maybe, but we don't know. But Granola's too strong, man. He's too strong. He He's the real dude. Yeah. Yep, yep. It's wild. I'm just going through these things. Yeah, but Mitch, any, anything else? Waiting for July 20th to get here. I'm ready to see. I'm ready for Vegeta to surprise me, and then I'm ready for Granola to bring me back down to reality. <laughs> so just... Yeah, because with the Ve- with the Vegeta training, we only saw him break rocks. Like, that is not going to be enough. No. No, not at all. Someone's going to save him. I hope it's your prediction. I hope it's gas. And Gas just comes here just killing everybody. And we finally get to see what he does. I don't know if Whis is going to pop up out of nowhere and just take them to their planet again and talk about their ass whooping. But I, I, No, that's the thing. I didn't even consider Whis saving the day. I didn't consider that at all. Because he has to be watching this shit. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I guess that would be nice. You know, beer was coming, like, save the day or something. Ooh, where we actually, because remember that manga chapter against more where Beerus is like, all right, I need to step in. And we were just like, wait. Yeah. Hopefully that, that, that would be sweet. I would prefer that. I, yeah. Even, even though it's lining up gas, a, a, a Beerus intervention is much needed. I have to wait and see. July. July twentieth, next, next month, and keep you. Um, Dragon Ball Heroes will keep you over as they just dropped a latest episode, which was good too. So it's so good. Their animation so good. The the anime. Now there was there was a frame in Heroes um, where when um, when Black and uh, Goku or Ultra Instinct Omen Goku were fighting. It was funny. Someone paused on it. It was whenever Black was trying to kick Goku in the face. Mm-hmm. And right before his foot actually hit Goku's face, you saw Goku's face and his skin color, right? But his eyes were offset on the frame. So it didn't actually look like his, his, his Goku's right eye was halfway off his face and his left eye didn't even exist. So, like, a, a little nitpick. But it, I'm like, okay, let's not slack on the animation here because this is the coolest thing we've got going on. And with that being said, that is um, it for our review analysis of Dragon Ball Super chapter number 73, Goku vs. Granola. A lot of action, a lot of questions. Uh, we're definitely in, really intrigued on what Vegeta is going to do next month and how long he's going to last until gas and them get here. And we're going to go from there. Uh, definitely want to thank all of the listeners. Many different personal. We need to make sure to pray, comment, subscribe, listen to, and let us know what you're doing. Nola, do you think any one going down that? Was too early, or maybe I should have been the finish, or 
what is Sakai going to do? How strong is Gas? Built up to be super strong. What technique do you have? We're just going to have to find that out on July 20th. And thank you, Mitch, for being our Dragon Ball expert and being on with us today. Can't wait to have you back yeah. next month. Absolutely. Look forward to it. So have a good night, everyone. Thanks again for listening, and we'll talk next time. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.